How's going guys, welcome to the channel. In this video we are gonna see, what if Naruto got harem with Mocha, Ruby and Akua. Part 1. Huge shout out to Hikaru Kisaragi for this story. If you wants to see awesome fanfiction like this, don't forget to subscribe. Now let's get into the video. Please, Issa-san, help me take care of my son. Minato bowed before the greatest vampire lord earnestly. The oracle has informed me through my dreams. The Kayubi will be released from my wife's womb. I I don't want the villagers to hate my son for what he has no control of. This is not what my wife and I want. Ishina-chan knows the pain of being sequestered to isolation by the society, and she understands the hatred. It's painful. Foolish humans. The silver-haired vampire growled. Why must I help you? Because you're a father as well. And you're a husband just like I am. Minato clenched his quavering fists. I just wish you can accept my proposal and raise my son as yours. I know that you do not have any sons. Naruto Naruto will take care of your daughters and treat them as his sisters. I'm sure of it. Issa contemplated as he twirled with a string of his silver hair. Akuha is currently in overseas. Kaluya will be lonely if she has nobody to play with, and she will be a few months younger than Naruto. However, the Kayubi no Yoko is a powerful demon that holds unparalleled power that even I must be wary of him. I just couldn't believe humans could devise seals to imprison the demonic fox into a feeble child. If I train Minato's son to synchronize his soul with the Kayubi, maybe he will become a hybrid demon. That way, he will be loyal to me and at the same time, protect my daughters. Very well. I will not intervene with human affairs. Once the sealing is done, I will bring the child back with me to Castle Akashia. The vampire lord exhaled a heavy breath before vanishing into a violet lightning bolt. Thank you Minato looked out of his office's window with a sorrowful smile adorning his face. Issa was unfazed at the dreadful semblance lingering in the atmosphere. The pungent blood leaking from the dead corpses scattered on the unforgiving earth disgusted the vampire lord. Issa strolled gracefully towards Minato and Kishina lifeless forms and sighed in deepest melancholy. If I have not owed you that favor, I will not even wish to do what I have to do now. May your souls rest in peace. The vampire lord carried the crying child into his hands and examined the new host of the nefarious Kayubi no Yoko. Naruto Shuzen, you shall be my son from today onwards. Your allegiance, loyalty and soul are bound to me. Six years later. Haluya chan Put the marinated lamb into the oven and set it to 25 minutes. Naruto yelled as he diced the vegetables. Okay. Are you sure daddy won't be mad at us for secretly using the kitchen? Kaluya asked in uncertainty and accidentally twisted the timer to half an hour. You know he is very overprotective over us. So what if he knows? He's not gonna do anything to us. Worst case scenario, he would lick us to death. Besides, if he restrains the two of you doing anything drastic, you won't gain any experiences in life. That's boring. The blonde chirped cheerfully before he ladled the pot of soup to have a little sip. Ah. The soup is ready. Little Mocha was sitting on the chair, watching fervently at her siblings preparing lunch. Ani-sama. Me hungry. Naruto chuckled at his younger sister and pinched her cheeks. I am hungry. Hungry. Not hungry. The younger vampire blinked innocently at her caring brother. Me hungry. Just sit here quietly, alright. The blonde ruffled his sister's soft silver hair with a smile and returned to work. When Naruto reached his workstation, he heard a painful yelp. Turning his attention to Kaluya, the blonde startled in solicitude at her sister's bleeding finger and the bloodied knife lying idly at the chopping board. I cut my finger, Nai-chan. The blonde vampire tried to ease her pain, but to no avail would the bleeding be stopped. Naruto rushed to Kaluya's side and scrutinized her wound before sucking her finger. The blonde vampire squealed inwardly but remained a calm composure, she was blushing uncontrollably however. Nai-chan. Naruto kissed his sister's finger and the wound healed miraculously. Here, wash your hands and throw the onions, garlic and potato into the pot. I'll do the chopping. I am sorry I'm just so clumsy. It's alright. Don't blame yourself, Kaluya-chan. It's not your fault. I cut myself all the time. Naruto flashed a toothy smile at his sibling before taking over Kaluya's job. The blonde vampire nodded enthusiastically and skipped towards her next allocated destination. Momentarily, the blonde felt somebody tugging at his pants. Naruto paused and tilted his head downwards, only to see little Mocha gripping his trousers tightly. Me want help. Me want help. You want to help, huh? Naruto chuckled benignly as he hoisted his sister and situated her on a bench. The blonde proceeded in placing a few plates on the table. I'm planning on making spaghetti with those pre-made pasta. But since you're being such a little angel and wish to help, I need you to help me mix the flour with this dough and mold it until it is soft. And then you squash the dough so it becomes flat. Very flat. Lastly, you insert the flat dough into this. Naruto rummaged the kitchen drawer before picking out a pasta machine. 
The blonde demonstrated several techniques for the imminent procedure to his younger sister before handing the dough to Mocha. Think you can handle it? Yup. Good girl. Mocha giggled jubilantly at her compliment before staring puzzlingly at the dough. The little vampire held the chunk of unknown in her hands before dropping it on the tray of flour and started laughing lively at her accomplishment. Naruto walked back to his station and tossed the diced vegetables into the boiling soup. Are you sure Mocha-chan knows what she's doing? Kaluya shifted sights and chuckled nervously at her little sister, punching the dough senseless. Everybody needs to make a start one day. Naruto hummed a happy tune and washed his hands. Don't overcook the lamb. It tastes nasty if you overcook it. Remember last week you tried to cook the lamb? It caught fire and we missed lunch. I know what I'm doing. Kaluya pouted. She didn't realize she had set the timer for an hour. An hour later. Issa was in his extravagant study chamber, tending to his paperwork when he smelled the revolting aroma of overcooked lamb. Darn it. They are cooking in the kitchen again. That only mean I will miss my lunch. This is not happening. Naruto. The blonde perked his head up and cringed fearfully at the blare of his father's voice. Ah. That's the signal. What signal? Kaluya queried quizzically. The lamb is overcooked. Naruto deadpanned. The blonde vampire shrieked aloud before opening the oven and coughed ferociously at the emitted smoke. Oh no. The lamb. Hastily, Kaluya tried to save lunch and reached out to grab the burning tray, only to forget that she didn't wear any gloves. The ditzy vampire cried as she dropped the heated tray of charcoal abomination. Kaluya wailed in a mixture of shame and affliction at her failure to produce decent food once again. I'm so useless. I can't do anything right. The blonde vampire ran comically into her brother's embrace, but tripped at her own footing before reaching to Naruto. Reacting to impulse, the blonde ghostly appeared beside his falling sister and caught her in the nick of time. You okay, Kaluya chan Nai-chan. Kaluya burst into tears and sank her fangs into Naruto's neck. The blonde winced in pain. What are you doing, Kaluya chan The ditzy vampire sighed in contentment as she removed her lips from her brother's neck. I'm having lunch. I'm not your lunch. Be but I destroyed lunch. Kaluya wept. We can always recook it. What did I say about not drinking my blood whenever you desire? Kaluya pouted and showcased her glorious puppy eyes technique to her brother. But you love me, right? Nai-chan. Always using that stupid technique. Of course I love you. I. Naruto. The door slam opened and the seething vampire lord emerged from the darkness. What have you done to lunch? Upon hearing Issa's enraged roar, Mocha jolted in fright before crying aloud. The silver-haired vampire lord panicked and darted to his daughter's side. Mocha. I'm not shouting at you. Please don't cry. Your mother will be angry at me if you. Naruto tapped his father's shoulder with a malevolent smirk tugging at his lips. Hey, let's make a deal. I calm Mocha-chan and you won't get mad at me. Or what? Issa growled in umbrage. Or I tell mom about your dirty little secret. And it involves with some magazines and a bunch of crumpled tissue papers. Deal. Issa gulped in consternation before mumbling incoherently under his breath. Ungrateful brat. The blonde strolled towards the weeping Mocha while whistling a leisure tune before patting his sister's head affectionately. Mocha-chan, let's go to the dog farm. I promise you that I will get a dog for you and Kaluya-chan, right? It was phenomenal, one moment the silver-haired young vampire was crying and instantly she stopped her outburst before giggling vivaciously at her benevolent brother. Okay. Me want see doggy. Naruto carried the little Mocha behind his back and seized Kaluya's wrist before hopping away merrily. See ya, dad. Have a nice day. Oh, watch out for the soup. Issa turned his attention to the violent pot beside him. As if on cue, the soup erupted and drenched the vampire lord. Issa was trembling in utter anger as he removed the carrot away from his precious silver hair. This this humiliation non erituo. The dogs winced frightfully before the malicious presence of Naruto. Kalyu and Mocha were assaying and cuddling random dogs, while their older brother stood behind them, watching attentively at all the dogs in the kennel. It seems the dogs are afraid of you, Nai-chan. Naruto shrugged nonchalantly. It's only natural. Bani sama Miwan doggy. The blonde ambled forward and surveyed a golden retriever disinterestedly before pointing a lazy finger at it. How about this puppy over here? It's not afraid of me. Does show some guts to it. Mocha stroked the soft fur of the puppy and smiled joyously. Okay. If Ani sama won this doggy, me won this doggy too. Palua stood beside her brother and giggled. We need to get a name for the dog then. How about Max? So cliché. Kalyu whined. I was thinking Pity Potter. Too long for a name. Naruto rolled his eyes. Let call it Budo. Mocha blinked at her siblings. Budo. Naruto twisted his sights at Kalua before shaking his head disapprovingly. Nah, weird name. Let's just call it Max. Shilishiller. Kalua countered. 
Budo. Mocha interjected childishly. Max. Mickey Mew. Budo. Max. Pinky Cuckoo. Kalua chirped. Naruto's brow twitched in annoyance. Kalua chan, you keep changing weird names for the dog. And no, Budo rhymes with my name. I don't want no dog's name rhymes with my name. Max will do. Okay. Mocha agreed with a nod, and Kalua sighed. Max sounds so boring. I'll go pay for the dog and all the necessities. Stay here. And if you see any strangers trying to buy you off, kick them in their little piss pump. Naruto stuffed his pockets with his fists and walked towards the counter insouciantly. Unbeknownst to the trio, a few demons had their eyes locked on the defenseless vampires. When the blonde left, the assailants approached the sisters and cackled sinisterly. Hello, fair maidens, do you two want to know a secret? Mocha nodded naively, whilst Kalua was wary of the three demons. Nai-chan told us not to talk to strangers. Well, we are not strangers. We just want to be friends with the two of you. Oh yeah? We just want you to scram MMPH. The demons clamped their hands at Kalua's mouth before seizing Mocha and darted away. Perceiving an ominous danger, Naruto dashed out from the counter and was petrified at the disappearance of his sisters. The blonde extricated his dilemma swiftly by sniffing the atmosphere and caught sense of his sister's fragrance. Naruto morphed into a rampaging flame and sped towards to the rescue. Let us go. If you don't, when our Nai-chan comes, you'll all be sorry. Kalua exclaimed, trying her best to conceal her fear. She would never submit herself to the vile demons, she was, after all, a proud vampire. Mocha was confused and scared however and cried. Ani-sama. Bad guy. Ani-sama. Shut up, stupid girl. Yell one more time and I'll rip your tongue out. That's enough. A familiar presence barricaded the demon's path. Put my sisters down and we can talk about this. Ani-sama. Mocha cheered. Nai-chan. Kalua felt relief, she could always count on her brother. Sorry, but we need them. Our organization requires the essence of vampire blood, maidens preferably. Get out of our way or you'll suffer excruci. Let my sisters go or you will suffer excruciating pain. Naruto furrowed his brows, his body suddenly ignited into flames. God, if they wish to abduct someone at a vampire's caliber, at least send someone competent enough to take down a matured vampire. Not some half-assed fitches. The demons were expected to quaver in fear. Instead, they snuck out a device and pressed a few buttons on it. The outcome was instantaneous. Naruto suddenly dropped to his knees and clutched his ears, screaming in agony as he trembled furiously. Mocha and Kalyu were crying, trying their hardest to struggle their way out of the iron grips from the demons. Naruto's eyes were bleeding blood, and the crimson liquid cascaded along the curvature of his cheeks. The demon sneered as he kicked Naruto in the guts, effectively sending the blonde sliding through the mud. Ain't so tough now, huh? Our organization knows of your powers. We have been observing you for a long time, Naruto Shuzen. Unlike your sisters, you're not a vampire. We know what you will become in the future. Since you've already stepped into your own grave, I guess we'll do the honor to end your life. Can't let you to hinder our plans in the future, huh? Relax, we'll make sure your sisters will be treated good for sure. Naruto gritted his teeth in frustration. You bastard. Whatever the device was, it was killing Naruto. The blonde crawled towards his sister, desperately trying to reach out for them. Kalyu and Mocha sobbed as they two tried to grab their brother's hand, only for the demons to jerk away and chortled. What a touching scene. Too mushy for my taste. We wasted too much time. Let's go before. Before what? The demons turned and witnessed this Shuzen, the vampire lord, in all his glory glaring furiously at them. You dare kidnap my daughters, hurt my son and expect to live. What insolence. With a snap of his fingers, the demons were blasted by an invisible force and were sent sailing through the air, crashing onto the trees in the process. Freed from the demons' grasps, Kalyu and Mocha rushed to their brother's side. Nai-chan. Hang on. We'll get help soon. Ani-sama. Mocha tried to wipe off the blood stain from Naruto's cheeks with her tiny fingers. The last things Naruto saw were his crying sisters and his father performing a magic spell. The rest was darkness. Opening his eyes weakly, Naruto realized that he was facing the ceiling of his room. The blonde eyed his left and noticed Mocha sleeping beside him, snoring lightly on his pillow. Turning his attention to his right, he saw Kalua sleeping with tear marks adorning her face. Naruto recalled the event that took place earlier the day and sighed. The blonde sniffed the air and smelled the aroma of black pepper steak, with steamed vegetable lingering in the atmosphere. No doubt his sisters must have been eating their dinner while watching after him. The blonde smiled as he planted kisses on Mocha and Kalua's foreheads, before climbing out of his bed silently. Naruto spared his sisters one last glance before leaving his room. Naruto strolled through the hallway aimlessly. His pathway coincidentally led to the garden, and he was pleased with it. 
When he reached his destination to admire the moon, he was surprised to see his mother seating on the bench, watching the stars while cuddling Issa. Naruto grinned and mocked a cough. Heh, am I interrupting something? Not at all. How are you feeling, dear? I heard you risked your life to save Mocha-chan and Kalyu-chan. You're very brave. Akasha smiled. They're my sister. I will sacrifice everything for them if I must. Naruto plucked a white rose and smelled its fragrance. And I'm fine. A little headache, but I'm fine. Issa nodded. That's good to know. I am surprised that they know of your true identity. It's all your fault for being too lax over our mansion security. Akasha nudged her husband's chest. It's not like any demon can beat us. How do you explain what happened this afternoon? This aside. That's an exception. I will see to it to the truth. And Naruto, do not go out with your sisters anymore. Your mother and I have too many enemies. I understand. Naruto grimaced. Dad. Yes. I want to intensify my training. Akasha arched a brow. Are you sure? I mean, what happened today is not your fault. Don't blame yourself. Mocha-chan and Kaluya-chan almost got hurt because of my weakness. You can't blame yourself, Naruto. Issa explained. They have developed technologies to counterattack your powers. Unless you reach to maturity, their technologies will have a severe effect on you. That's why I need to get stronger. To prevent anything to happen to my precious people. Akasha giggled. So young yet so charming. Say, Naruto, since you love your sisters so much, do you want to marry them one day? Mocha-chan and Kaluya-chan will be lucky to have you as their husband. I don't really care about the vampire's tradition, where royal vampires must marry to royalty, and I'm sure Asakun doesn't care as well, right? This averted his eyes away. Right. Naruto, however, was blushing. No. I can't accept that, mother. They're my sisters. That sounds so wrong. I mean isn't that incest? Technically, no. They're not related to you, so that doesn't count. Akasha beamed. But they're still my sisters to me. It's alright. When you reach puberty, you will have second thoughts about the matter. Just remember that you're the best candidate for a husband for them. I can't trust anybody to love them more than you do. Sibling love or that kind of love, you decide. The blonde's blush only deepened. Mom. Issa took the opportunity to save his son from further embarrassment and coughed. Anyway, we will proceed to the training tomorrow. Now go sleep. You deserve it. Good night, Dad, Mom. Naruto bowed, twirled around and walked to his bedroom. Good night, son. Good night, my dear, and don't forget about the marriage proposal. Akasha waved cheerfully at her son, who seemed to walk even faster after her statement. Three years later. Meeting Coco was uneventful. The day he was asked to escort his new younger sister as a tour guide by his father, he knew something was not right. The girl was raised by her mother who often neglected her, her reason of coming to the mansion was the same as Kalyu's reason. They both shared the same mother and their mother cared about her looks more so than her own daughters. Issa had no choice but to bring her back. Akasha was a marvelous mother, and his children loved her more than him. Hell, his children loved Naruto more than Akasha. Issa spent several days in a sulky corner, mumbling about ungrateful brats and unloved father repetitiously. Two years ago. You must be Kokoa chan right? Naruto smiled. That's me. Who are you? The girl's haughtiness was palpable. You're not a vampire. Where are my siblings? Where's father? Are you my servant? Firstly, I'm not your servant. I'm your brother. You will learn to respect that, understand. Naruto's serious look of death perturbed the girl, and she nodded her head hastily. Secondly, you're right. I'm not a vampire. And thirdly, Mocha-chan and Kaluya-chan are waiting anxiously for you in the living room. Come. The blonde gripped the girl's hand gently and escorted her to the living room. Throughout their journey, she was studying him curiously. Naruto noticed her stares and glanced at her way, only for her to look away quickly. When they reached to the main hall, Naruto was tackled by a silver blur. Ani-sama. You're back. Can you train me? Naruto chuckled as he hugged Mocha. Sure. But first, meet our new addition to the family. Koko Ashuzen. The silver-haired vampire stared at the girl impassively and introduced herself. I'm Mocha. I'm Kalya. I'm sure mommy speaks a lot about me. The blonde vampire beamed. Koko arched a brow and responded with a tone of arrogance. Who are you? Mother never mentioned anything about someone called Kalya. Oh well, it's not like she mentions anything to me anyway. Weird name, by the way. The girl was whacked on the head by her rudeness. Kokoa tilted her head and nursed the comical bruise atop of her head and glared daggers at the culprit. How dare you? You dare hit me? A royal vampire? You're not even a vampire, you inferior buffoon. Mocha and Kaluya gasped. The truth was Kaluya felt hurt at Kokoa's words, her mother had really abandoned her. Naruto narrowed his eyes to vicious lits as he irradiated a sickening murderous aura. Firstly, we are family. 
No matter what, you will not be rude to Kaoyue Chan. Do you understand me? Koko gulped. And secondly, I may not be a vampire, but that doesn't mean you're stronger than me. It's true. Mocha exclaimed. Nobody can beat Ani Sama, except mother and father. Ha! Koko pointed an accusing finger at her sisters. It's most likely because the two of you are weak. You're not fit to be my sisters. The entire hallway was flooded with killing intent, and Koko collapsed onto the ground, panting tediously. When she looked up, Naruto was staring at her with his demonic crimson eyes. Apologize to your sisters, now. Sorry. Sorry to whom? Naruto beeped an eyebrow as his eyes remained a dangerous glint. Sorry Mocha Wani Sama Kalyu Wani Sama. Kalyu ran to her youngest sister's side and embraced her tightly. Nai Chan, there is no need to scare her. She's only a child. Naruto closed his eyes and sighed. Child or not, she will understand humility. Doesn't mean you're a vampire, you can act high and mighty to me. They are your sisters and you will acknowledge that. You're now one of us. I will protect you with the best of my abilities, but I can't do that unless you accept me as your elder brother. When you come to respect that fact, you can come and talk to me. Now, Mocha-chan, let's go to the training field. Kaluya-chan, can you take care of her? Kaluya nodded and smiled at Kokoa. Come, I'll show you around. And don't mind Nai-chan. He cares for all of us, really. Mocha gripped Naruto's hand and started skipping to the training field, dragging the blonde away. Koko was still stuck in stupor. He's a monster. He can be if he wants. But Nai-chan truly cares about us, and I'm sure he has no intention of hurting you. You'll get to know him well if you can try not to get to his bad side. He's actually very overprotective of us. Oh well. Let's go see your new bedroom. It will be so exciting. Kalua laughed bubbly and brought Kokoa to their new destination. Present. Ever since that day, Kokoa had become clingy to Naruto, much to his displeasure. Standing before him were Mocha and Kokoa who were wielding a claymore and an axe respectively. Kalua was sweating as she sat on the bench, being the sole audience of the match. Naruto dug his ear in succinctly and huffed. Are you two going to just stand there and do nothing? It's getting boring here. The two girls screamed out their war cry and charged blindly at the blonde. Naruto grinned as he evaded Kokoa's attempted slash and purposely lashed a foot out, the redeed tripped and fell onto the floor pathetically. Mocha learned of her younger sister's mistake and leaped to the sky. Naruto brought a hand over his eyebrows as he sighed melodramatically. Mocha was descending at him at an unbelievable velocity. Nevertheless, the blonde dodged the blow effortlessly. The silver-haired vampire spun around and sliced her elder brother, but to her dismay, Naruto was standing behind her. Before she could retaliate, the blonde swept Mocha's feet, and the girl tumbled to the ground. Naruto yawned and ambled towards the cheering Kalya. Better luck next time. I'm not done yet. Kokoa stood up gingerly, seized her axe and charged towards Naruto. Adroitly, the blonde snatched Kokoa's wrist and threw the axe away. You've lose, Kokoa-chan. Kokoa attempted a sneak kick, but her foot was halted when Naruto pulled her closer to him and forced her to lose her own momentum. Mocha took the opportunity of her elder brother's distracted state and snuck behind him. She failed when Naruto suddenly vanished and manifested his frame behind her. Mocha knew of her brother's teleportation skills and swiftly threw her blade at him. Naruto didn't dodge though. At precise timing, Naruto kicked the tip of the charging blade and the claymore flipped into the air. Quickly, the blonde snatched the hilt of the claymore and the sword belonged to him. The both of you lose. I have a weapon and one of you don't. This match is over. Why do you throw the claymore at him, Wani Sama? Koko fumed. It's my only chance to win. Mocha argued. The two of you lack teamwork. Naruto deadpanned. What can teamwork amount to anything, Ani Chan? Koko folded her arms and puffed her cheeks childishly. I don't have two sets of eyes. I can only sense you vaguely if you attack me from the back. If your teamwork skills are great, then one of you will automatically become the distraction and the other aim for the kill. However, the both of you aim for the kill, and no one was to do the distraction. In this kind of disarray formation, I can defeat the two of you with ease. Naruto explained while Kaluya brought a bottle of water for him. Naruto wasted no time to uncap the bottle and swallowed the liquid. Who cares about that? Two against one is never fair. If either of us beat you, it means we're the strongest. Koko countered. True. Naruto returned the bottle to Kalyu and smiled. The blonde vampire blushed and delivered the drinks to her younger sister, while her elder brother continued. However, the two of you cannot defeat me in a fair go. You need to learn to drop your pride and honor sometimes to win a match. Mocha sighed as she accepted the bottle of water. At any rate, nobody can catch up to you, Ani-sama. Who knows? The three of you are vampires, destined to become one of the strongest monsters in the world. I might become inferior in the future. Naruto grinned. Mocha shook her head. No way. Ani-sama is Kayubi. There's no way we can defeat you. 
That's not true. The Kyubi is once defeated by mere humans. How you laugh nervously. Perhaps so. We haven't reached adulthood and our powers are still unstable. Once we become stronger, we might be able to beat you then, Nai Chan. Eh, ambitious, huh? The blonde vampire blushed. Yeah. We will kick your butt for sure, Ani Chan. Just you wait. Coco smirked. Yes, I will be waiting for that day to arrive. Naruto inwardly thought. Not. It was then their dog, Max, barked manically and kept running circles around the siblings. Naruto arched a brow and noticed a disturbance in the force. Someone is coming. Oh. Maxi is scared. But why? Coco and Mocha brushed the dog's fur, trying to tame their pet's anxiety. I think that would be my fault. A dark cloaked figure approached the siblings slowly. The blonde was scrutinizing the intruder and sniffed the atmosphere. A vampire. The girl stopped in her tracks and bowed at the group. Hello. My name is Akira Shuzen. I just migrated from China to here so pardon me if I address any of you rudely. You know, cultural differences. Naruto tapped his chin and a proverbial light bulb shined in his head. Oh, yes. Father told me that you will be coming to stay with us. I apologize for my tardiness. Ah yeah. It's alright, no biggies really. Akua smiled. I'm Naruto Shuzen, nice to meet you. I'm Kalyu Shuzen, feel free to ask me anything if you have problems with your stay here. The blonde vampire beamed cheerfully. I'm Mocha Shuzen. The girl stared at her elder sister silently. Why am I still the youngest? Coco crossed her arm but was rewarded with a light smack on her head. She tilted her head and saw her brother giving her a look. Coco sighed and bowed. I'm Coco Shuzen, and my name doesn't mean chocolate powder. Akua giggled at the delightful ambience of her new family. I'm sure it doesn't. Please take care of me from now on. And you. The elder sister of the family pointed a finger at Naruto. You're not a vampire, are you? You smell like a fox. Yes. Mocha nodded. Ani-sama is a fox demon. A very powerful fox demon. Now, now, I'm not powerful. Dad and mom are. Naruto scratched his head and laughed heartily. Unexpectedly, Akua's stealthy walked to the blonde and leaned against her brother, her arms wrapping around his waist. I'm sure you will take extra care of me, won't you, Nai-sama? Akua's seductive tone sparked jealousy in Kalua, Mocha and Koko's hearts. Naruto swallowed the nervous lump in his throat and pushed Akua gently away. Of course. I care for everybody equally. That's good to know. Come. Show me the mansion in my bedroom, will you? Akua lowered herself to grab her suitcase, but she was surprised when Naruto had already held it for her. I'll carry it for you. After all, being a brother means being a servant to all of you. How sweet. Akua gave a quick kiss to her brother's lips and skipped enthusiastically into the mansion. Perceiving the fact that nobody was following her, Akua turned around and arched a brow at Naruto's day's form. What's wrong? Are you going to let me wander in the mansion alone? I might go into the wrong room, you know. I am sorry. Allow me to escort you in. The pair entered into the mansion, and Akua purposely held onto Naruto's hand. Meanwhile, the other sisters were burning with rage. Mocha and Koko were about to relinquish their untamed anger, but stopped when they saw Kalua picked up a nearby axe and started swinging ferociously and randomly at the bush. They swore they saw blazing inferno igniting in Kalua's eyes as she went into rampage frenzy, trying to cut anything down in her path. Koko leaned towards Mocha and whispered. Hey, has Kalua Wani-sama been this scary before? Oh uh, no. The two girls stood there and watched their once optimistic and kind sister transforming into a devil as she kept slicing the bush into non-existence. Mocha and Coco gulped, their sister was superbly strong. And their father would have to pay to rebuild his garden. So, are you three homeschool or something? Akua queried. Yes, kind of. Dad forbids us to leave the mansion and employs a teacher for us. It must be very tiring for you then. Not really. Once you get used to it, it is pretty much a routine. In the morning, I have to prepare breakfasts for the girls. They prefer my cooking than the chefs here. In the afternoon, we attend classes at home, and afterwards, Mocha-chan and Cocoa-chan want to spar with me and Kalua-chan simply watch. She abhors violence with a passion and prefers to stay on the sideline. She's very strong actually. At night, Kalua-chan and I have to make sure the girls do their homework and we discuss work together. You can say we spend most of our time together. Wow, I'm sure the four of you are very close. I'm jealous. Akua smiled sadly at the blonde. My mother died when I was very young and I have to live with my aunt. She isn't a very nice person. I see, but that's in the past now. You're our sister now. I'll protect you, believe it. Protect me? Akua giggled. Can you? Who knows? Ah, we've reached your room. It's right beside mine. Naruto opened the door and led Akua to enter. 
The girl smiled as she explored the room, it had a rather exquisite taste, like a princess's room. Hm I prefer a simplistic looking room actually. I'm sorry, but we only reserve the best for our family. Naruto smirked as he situated the suitcase on a corner. If you have any problems, just knock on my door. Akasha mysteriously appeared behind the pair and coughed for attention. Naruto and Akua spun around and greeted the beautiful woman before them. Hey mom. Hello, my dear. And hello, Akua-chan. Do you like your room? Akua smiled. Too nice for my taste, but still acceptable nonetheless. That's great. Come, your father want to meet you. When the pair entered the main hall, there were a crowd of vampires gathering around. Standing in the crowd was the silver-haired vampire lord, Issa, tending to his guests. Naruto gripped Akua's wrist and noted that she had a smooth complexion, but shoved off that thought and whizzed her through the crowd to the table decorated with food. So, what do you like? Ah yeah. Of course I prefer Chinese food. I live there all my life. But a little change in cuisine might do me good. Akua blushed when she noticed that Naruto was still holding her hand unconsciously. Indeed. Naruto took a plate and grabbed heaps load of food on it. Here. You will love all of them. Oh. Raymond. The blonde hopped to the gigantic bowl of Raymond with drills dripping from his lips. Raymond. My precious. Akua hit her giggle at Naruto's childishness. Turning around, she saw her sisters, who were all wearing dresses, approaching her. Akua felt like an eyesore to the Grandio celebration party. She was the only one wearing all black, even Naruto was wearing orange jacket and something decent for the party. She did perceive the murderous aura emitting from her blonde sister and smirked, Akua had probably stolen Naruto's first kiss, and she knew Kaluya had secretly desired to be their brother's first. Nevertheless, Akua smiled sweetly at her sisters. Hello, it is nice to see you three again. Yes, it is. Kaluya pulled up a fake smile at her elder sister. Are you enjoying yourself? I am. Naisama has been a very good host to me. Right, Naisama. Akua turned her attention to Naruto, which subsequently, the girl switched sights at their brother and saw the blonde inhaling his ramen indignantly. He's a glutton, isn't he? Akua chuckled but regained her expressionless state when Kaluya strolled towards Naruto and grabbed the bowl of ramen, effectively stopping Naruto. Nai-chan, it is not healthy for you to eat so fast. Besides, we're in a party, manners are appropriate. Eh, sorry about that. But I love ramen. Can't help it. I'm sure you do. Here, let me feed you. Kaluya picked up a chopstick and blinked. Say ah. Naruto opened his mouth and was fed happily by Kaluya. Akua was seething, trying her best to suppress her anger when she caught sight of Kaluya's quick victorious glance at her. Without hesitation, she marched towards Naruto, grabbed a cup of orange juice and smiled beatifically at the blonde. Naisama, you must be thirsty. Here, let me feed you. It's alright, I can help myself. Oh, no, no, no. It's the least I can do. Akua gently placed the edge of the cup on Naruto's lips, and the blonde drank the juice in delight. There you go. Thanks, Akua-chan. Kaluya was angered at the smile Naruto directed at Akua and seized a cottage pie. Nai-chan, I think you should try some of this cottage pie. It's good. Really? Yes, here, let me feed you. Akua responded immediately by snatching a chocolate brownie. Nai-sama, I'm sure you love sweets. Here, have a brownie. Kaluya tossed the cottage pie away and snatched a glass of mango pudding. Nai-sama, the brownie is too sweet. Here, the mango pudding will do just great. Akua gritted her teeth in frustration, threw the brownie away and grabbed a chunk of cheese. Here, eat cheese. No. That's unhealthy. Here, eat my chocolate chip ice cream. Do you want to fatten up Nai-sama? Nai-sama, don't mind her. Here, eat this strawberry fudge trifle. Nai-chan hates that. Nai-chan, eat some of this caramel slice. Caramel slice. Nai-sama, don't listen to her. Guava-flavored snowballs are the best. Snowballs. Don't be silly. Nai-chan, eat some of this watermelon-flavored yogurt. Try this berry tiramisu. Chocolate mousse. Cheesecake. Sticky date pudding. Passion fruit syrup waffles. Almond cake with poached peach. Stop. Mocha and Cocoa pulled their sisters away, who were ignorantly unaware that they're stuffing and choking Naruto. When they've regained back their senses, they were startled that the blonde was in a coughing fit. Akua and Kaluya knelt beside their brother and patted his back. It's all your fault Nai-chan is coughing. No. It's your fault for stuffing Nai-sama's face. No. It's. Silence. Issa bellowed, alerting the siblings in the process. What in the world are you two doing? Can't you behave yourself? We have guests. Akua and Kaluya shrunk at their father's rage. Issa calmed himself and announced. As you have all known, my eldest daughter has decided to join our family. I have opened this party to celebrate our family's union. 
and to determine Akua's strength, can you please step forward? Akua obliged, but before she went to the stage, she shot Kalua a nasty glare. Kalua, please come to the stage as well. The blonde vampire stroll trailed after Akua. The two of you shall fight. Showcase your ability to our guests. Make me proud, my daughters. Now, fight to the death. Akasha glared intensely at her husband, and Issa swallowed hard. Her I mean fight till you drop. His wife's glare magnified tremendously, and the vampire lord was sweating bullets. Oh, I mean just fight. Akua cracked her knuckles and grinned predatorily. Forgive me if I accidentally break your neck. Kalua cracked her neck and flexed her fingers. Please do forgive me then if I accidentally kill you. Begin. Amic Naruto's death. Mocha and Koko were tending to their brother when the Retid grabbed a bottle of water. Here, Ani-chan, drink some of this and you'll get better. Unwilling to lose in the hands of her younger sister, Mocha swiftly snatched a glass of wine from the butler and fed her brother the beverage. Here, Ani-sama, drink some of this and the cough will stop. Kokoa narrowed her eyes at Mocha, the battle was on. Snatching a glass of champagne, Kokoa opened her brother's mouth and poured the liquid into it. Ani-chan, drink this and you'll be fine. Mocha growled and quickly seized a glass of brain freeze. Drink this and it'll cool your body down, Ani-sama. Koko won't back off that easily. Immediately, Kokoa stood up, scanned the table of drinks before grabbing a glass of cocktail. Ani-chan, drink this and everything will be solved. No. Drink milk. No. Drink this flaming cocktail. No. Drink the brain freeze. Drink the white wine. Drink the whiskey. Juice. Coke. Nobody noticed Naruto had just died of intoxication and asphyxia. Akua clenched her fists and charged forward. Do me a favor and die. Palua jerked her fist backwards and bellowed. You're the pest. Meanwhile, Naruto was wiping off the food stain from his jaw and sighed as he watched the battle. His sisters were radiating murderous aura, and surprisingly, he had never seen Kalua's ferocity before. The blonde growled as he snapped his glare at his father, and Issa was grinning anxiously at the sight of imminent bloodshed. What the hell is dad doing? They're really trying to kill each other. Mocha and Koko were petrified by the sheer power emitting from their elder sisters. Kalua was a bubbly individual with everlasting optimism, not a furious barbarian fighting solely by ruthless instincts. Akua might be enigmatic, but her prowess was unbelievable. The two younger sisters had to admit, their elder sisters outmatched them in all ways. Akua ducked an incoming fist, seized Kalua's arm swiftly and threw her across the room. Unexpectedly, the blonde vampire jammed her legs into the ground, halted her momentum and dashed towards Akua. The elder sister grinned predatorily and ran forward. Momentarily, Naruto felt a horrendous bloodlust emanating from Akua's sinister pair of eyes and gawked. Oh shit. Handling pure energy into her hands, Akua thrust her appendage forward. Kalua strengthened the force of her fist with an abundance amount of her demonic power and launched her assault. Before their monster strengths clashed in collision, Naruto manifested his frame between the two combatants and adroitly caught both of their devastating attacks in firm grips, resulting in scattering ripples of aftershock resonating throughout the entire main hall. Akua and Kalua gasped as their killing intents dissipated, their brother's frightening glares perturbed the sisters tremendously. Nai-chan. Naranai. What are you doing? Akua blinked as Naruto's stare switched his attention sharply at his father. Those attacks are deadly. Why didn't you stop them, dad? This averted his guilty pair of eyes away and coughed. Uh. Thanks for coming. I appreciate all of your participations greatly. My men will escort all of you to the exits. Good day. Swiftly, the vampire lord disappeared hastily. Naruto sighed and examined Akua and Kalua's wounds. Let's leave this place. I'll heal your injuries in my room. The blonde dragged his sisters with him, and Mocha and Kokoa followed quietly behind. Akua couldn't resist her temptation to blush at the sight before her. Naruto was kissing her sore arm and miraculously, her wounds healed. Naruto applied ointment on her injuries and wrapped a white strip of bandage around her arm. Kalua was in the same conundrum as her elder sister, her cheeks were heated a vibrant pink throughout the entire procedure of her elder brother's delicate care. Naruto sighed as he eyed his sisters who were seating on his bed quietly. Would you mind telling me why are the two of you trying to kill each other just now? Kalua protested. It's in our blood. We vampires are supposed. That doesn't mean anything. Naruto interjected firmly. You two are sisters. There shouldn't be any animosity between family members. Now apologize to each other. The two sisters were reluctant. But. No butter I'll spank your butt. Apologize. Akua sighed and shifted sights at her younger blonde sister. I'm sorry for saying those hurtful words. I am sorry as well. Kalua looked down at her feet. There, now we're all friends. You two are the eldest of the sisters and the role models for Kokoa-chan and Mocha-chan. 
If there are tensions between the two of you, the rest of the family won't be happy too. Let's reach a mutual understanding. We're family after all. We should cherish each other. Right. Naruto smiled benevolently and kissed his sister's foreheads. I've to go. Meet you two at dinner. Within seconds, the blonde erupted into a dissipating flame. A few hours later. Naruto Shuzen was seating in his father's grand studying room, participating in a heated yet quiet glaring contest with the silver-haired vampire lord, Issa Shuzen. They were twirling with a lock of fringe from their hair and were boring each other with their melancholy expression. So let me sum it up, dad, you're saying that the reason why Akua-chan is moving in is because she's a ruthless assassin trying to dominate the demon world. You do know that you're putting us in high danger, right? Calm down, Naruto. You're just being paranoid. I'm sure she'll understand the rules of the palace in no time. Issa studied his nails, clearly uninterested with the dire situation at hand. Are you out of your mind? Do you want to wait until she tries to kill us all, then you'll make your moves. Naruto slammed his palm onto the antique table and objected. You need to give me a valid reason to convince me, dad. This aside. I know I'm not the best father in the world. You don't say. The blonde rolled his eyes. Shut up and let me finish my statement. You're ruining the mood. Sorry. Naruto deadpanned. Anyway, as I was saying, I'm not the best father in the world. I know that. Akua's violent deposition is partly my fault as well. How curious. I thought someone once said that a vampire is destined to be a bloodthirsty warrior. Aren't you very contradictive? Alright, fine, I'm a goddamned hypocrite. Satisfied. Naruto grinned victoriously. Very. Move on. Ungrateful brat. Issa mumbled incoherently under his breath and huffed, adjusting his tie and regained his composure. My point is I want to help her, and I will need your help. She is, after all, a Shuzen. I have heard rumors all over China that she's dangerous, and she has been living her life as a mercenary for years. I wish to bring her to Castle Akashia so she can change for the best. Naruto arched a brow. Why didn't you do that in the first place? There are complications. The blonde gave his father a suspicious look, and Issa sighed. Fine. I'm a powerful vampire. I'm lonely. I'm desperate for a shag. Okay. Too much information. Just tell me your sob story without scarring the rest of my life. Issa swirled his glass of wine and stared at the crimson liquid. Akua's mother is a very delicate woman. She resembles Akasha a lot. But she's frail and weak, even when her veins flow the blood of a powerful vampire. I met her decades ago and it just happened. When Akua is born, she leaves me and returns back to China. She has even taken in Akua's custody and there is pretty much nothing I can do. I only found out recently that she had passed away a few years ago. So? This intertwined his fingers together and rested his chin on the base of his conjoined hands, the seriousness of his demeanor was palpable. I want you to open Akua's heart for you. Naruto blushed uncontrollably and stammered. What are you suggesting, dad? You want me to be her boyfriend or something? That's outrageous. No. The vampire lord beeped a perplexed brow before his expression transformed into a dangerous smirk. But if you insist to have an intimate relationship with any of my daughters I will skin you alive, burn you in hot magma, and cut off your limbs slowly and painfully. I don't care what Akasha thinks, but I do not permit such actions. They will stay as fair maidens until I deem their mates worthy to become my sons-in-law. Am I clear? Yes, yes, whatever. It's not like I'm interested in my own sisters anyway. Keep telling yourself that. When you reach puberty, I assure you, things will change. Issa softened his gazes at the blonde. Look at it at her perspective. She's a child trying to defend herself in a cruel world. You cannot blame her entirely for her ruthlessness. It takes a bloodthirsty monster to live in a bloody world. And now I have the opportunity to provide her a safe haven where she can be nurtured for the best. I don't want her to end up becoming a mindless monster. She is my daughter after all. I understand. I'll try my best to get to know her better. Naruto sighed and wrestled himself tiredly to a standing posture. Any more else things to say? Tomorrow's training is at 7. Don't be late. Good night. Understood. Good night, dad. The blonde shut his eyes and vanished into a swirl of tyrannical wildfire. This aside and disappeared into a mirage of a thunderbolt. They didn't realize that Akua had been listening to their entire conversation outside the door for the whole time. Next morning. Akua jolted up from her bed in fright. Her nightmare had never failed to scare her every night. She might keep her tough demeanor to conceal her weakness occasionally, but her facade shattered every time she fell asleep. Sighing heavily, Akua stood up from her bed and examined her room. I'm still not used to this luxury. Naruto plated the last dish onto the table when Kalyu entered into the kitchen. The blonde smiled at his sister. Good morning, Kalyu chan Good morning, Nai-chan. Kalyu seemed to be avoiding her brother's passionate gazes, and it irked Naruto. 
The blonde slipped his gloves off, placed it on the counter bench and walked to his sister. Holding her shoulders gently, Naruto perceived of his sister's chagrin. What's wrong? Kalyu-chan. My mother is coming. Naruto widened his eyes in dismay before regaining his bearings. Oh. Okay. Nai-chan if you wish. No. It's alright. The blonde returned back to the sink and washed the dirty bowls. Kalyu sighed and sat on her seat. Mother despises Nai-chan a lot. What should I do? At that moment, Coco and Mocha ambled into the dining room and noticed the unusual dark ambience radiating within the room. Coco beamed and greeted her brother in delight. Naruto responded with a strained smile, which was something unusual the sisters noticed. Kalyu sighed and muttered. Coco. Our mother is coming. Coco gasped and Mocha darted her startled sights at her brother's back. Akua strolled into the chamber and spotted Kalyu staring stoically at her plate of food, Coco gawking like a goldfish and Mocha sweating. Naruto twirled the tap shut before situating himself on his seat. Naruto picked up his utensils and stared oddly at his quiet sisters. What's wrong? You four don't like pancakes. No it's just Kalyu was unsure what she should say. Akyu arched a brow. I don't know what's going on, but there is definitely something wrong in the mood. Abruptly, Mocha pulled Akua to a corner and whispered promptly into her ear. Koko and Kalyu's mother is coming. The elder sister tilted her head sideways in confusion. So? Daikuro hates Ani-sama with a passion. In fact, she hates me too. I think she will hate you too. Naruto took the opportunity to interrupt. Mocha-chan, what did I tell you about babbling things on people's back? But Jayakuro. She is your stepmother. You will respect her as such, understand. Mocha sighed at her brother's impassiveness and nodded meekly. Okay. That doesn't mean I like her. Akua sat on her seat and witnessed a doleful silence intruding the room. Naruto beamed cheerfully. Let's eat. The pancake tastes nasty if it turns cold and soggy. Come on. I made this to celebrate our first breakfast with Akua-chan. The sisters tried their hardest to smile and ate their pancakes. Akua was an observant individual, and her profound wisdom and decoding emotions were unrivaled. She had noticed that her brother had not been smiling his genuine smile for the entire day. Naruto's fake smile was easily deciphered by the eldest sister of the family. After all, it took one to know one. She had lived her life faking smiles. When Jayakuro arrived, the siblings stood on the doorway in formality. Issa and Akasha manifested their frame before the siblings and waited silently for the imminent arrival of Koko and Kalyu's mother. Akasha placed a comforting hand on Naruto's shoulder and smiled softly. Calm yourself, Naruchan. I am calm, mom. The door slam opened and everybody switched their attentions to the entrance of the doorway. Eclipsing the bright light stood the silhouette of Jayakuro. She had wavy orange hair and pink lips. Adorning on her hair was a cocktail hat with veils and feathers that enhanced her elegance. She wore a dark gown, a necklace beaded with pearls encircling her neck, and a fur scarf draped over her slender shoulders. Emitting from her frame was sheer superiority, and her stance was filled with grace. For someone who had given birth to two daughters, she sure didn't look anything like a mother. Daikura walked towards Issa and embraced him. The woman proceeded to hug her daughters before noticing an unfamiliar addition in the family. Pointing a finger at Akua, Jayakuro sneered. Who's she? This is Akua-chan, our sister. Naruto feigned politeness with a shaky smile. Do I give you the permission to speak, Fox? Enough. First day of your return and you're already thirsting for an argument. Naruto is family. Be used to it. Issa said calmly. Jayakuro rolled her eyes and shot a nasty glare at Mocha, the girl winced at her predatory stare. Naruto sighed and took a tentative step forward. Mother, you must be tired from your... Without acknowledging Naruto's presence, Jayakuro twirled around and walked away. Butler, go get my luggage and bring them to my room. And dispose of that dog outside the main gate. Did I even give permission for the pest to be in my sight? The unnamed butler bowed and asked in a fearful tone. Your room is this way, Lady Jayakuro. Daikuro beeped her brow and stared fiercely at the butler. If my memories serve me right, Issa's room is that way. But Lady Akasha is. It's okay. I'll sleep in the guest room. Akasha sighed. Issa, however, objected. Jayakuro, you're only living here momentarily. There is no need for Akasha to move all her things to the guest room. I don't care. Jayakuro smirked. I will be sleeping in our room, Issa. End of the conversation. The conversation ends when I said it ends. Issa growled and his wife shrunk under his wrath. You will not be unreasonable in this trivial matter. It is simply inconvenient for Akasha to just move her things to the guest room. You're only staying here for a few days. There is no need of you to replace Akasha's belongings with yours. Daikuro wouldn't submit to her husband's will and protested. I didn't give her any permission. Enough. I don't want to quarrel with you over mundane matters in front of our children. 
Our children. Kalyu and Kokoa. Or those things you called your offspring. Jayakuro shot a glare of disgust at Akua, Mocha and Naruto. Akasha had enough and bared her fangs at Jayakuro. I will not have you insult my children. And what are you going to do about it? You and your abominations. In an instant, the entire hallway was flooded with murderous bloodlust, and everybody was pressurized by a sickening killing aura emanating from Issa. Continue your nonsense and I'll kick you out of this household, Jayakuro. My patience is not limitless. You will do as I said and move into the guest room. But I'm your wife, Issa. Why do you care about her and those things? Koko and Kalyu are your children. Koko and Kalyu are my children. Issa deadpanned. But Mocha, Akua and Naruto are my children as well. If you wish to reprimand others' demeaning quality, perhaps you should ask yourself. Have you done your duty as a mother? Yes I have. If you believe you have, I have nothing to say. Do not cause any unnecessary ruckus anymore. Issa swirled around gracefully and left the chamber, leaving a seething Jayakuro to glare intensely at Akasha. A few hours later. Akua took a sip from her glass of orange juice and arched a perplexed brow. Is her bitchy side her true personality or is her bitchy side for show? I'm afraid it's the former. Naruto leaned against the dining table and crossed his arms. Jayakuro hates me more than she hates Mocha. So why are you afraid of her? I am not afraid of her. Naruto averted his eyes away. Stop lying. Your heart is beating hell fast. You are definitely nervous. I just don't like to get close to her, alright. Most of my unwanted memories happen to be involved with her. Naruto sighed heavily. She's going to stay here for a week. You have to face your fear. Akua spoke softly before strolling to the exit of the kitchen. At any rate, I'm going to explore the mansion a bit. Engrossed in her conversation with her brother, she didn't realize she had bumped into someone. Akua yelped and noticed her glass of juice was empty. Naruto, however, was horrified, Akua just spilled her juice on Jayakuro's dress, albeit unintentionally. The elder vampire was fuming in exasperation as she growled at Akua. You little trash. Look what you've done to my clothes. This is expensive. Jayakuro raised her hand to slap Akua, but was stopped when Naruto animated his frame before Jayakuro for intervention and caught his stepmother's wrist. Did I give you the permission to touch me, you filth? Naruto recoiled and bowed. My deepest apologizes, Lady Jayakuro. Akua is unfamiliar with the rules of this household. Please forgive her. Jayakuro huffed and folded her arms. Forgive. Issa opens a party for her, and yet she has the nerve not to invite me. What impudence. As I have said, Lady Jayakuro, she isn't familiar with the rules of this household. She is not familiar with her relatives as well. Please be reasonable. I did not give you any permission to speak, trash. Jayakuro pushed Naruto aside and snarled at Akua. You little puny twerp, you've just ruined my favorite gown. You will pay. Naruto stood in front of Akua protectively and lowered his head. Lady Jayakuro, please vent your anger on me. Akua-chan is just. Silence. Jayakuro backhanded the blonde and Naruto sailed across the kitchen, crashing through the cabinets. Akua gasped and ran towards her brother. Narunai. What are you doing? I can handle this. Naruto seized Akua's arm and effectively stopping her from confronting the stalking Jayakuro. Don't do it. The blonde struggled to remove himself from the crater on the wall and knelt before Jayakuro. Please leave Akua-chan out of this. As her brother, I am willing to shoulder all the blames for her. The diabolical grin tugging on Jayakuro's lip widened in magnitude. Good. Then you can suffer twice the pain for her, you garbage. Morphing her hand into a whip embedded with sharp thorns, Jayakuro whiplashed her demonic arm at Naruto and slashed at the blonde's chest. Akua cried before darting towards Jayakuro, only for Naruto to stop her. The blonde shook his head hastily at Akua before replacing his frowns of agony to an uneasy smile. It's okay, I'll deal with it. Akua could only stood there and watch the malignant vampire elder torturing her brother. The awful cracking reverberation emitting from Jayakuro's whip caused Akua to cringe every time the whip made impact on her brother's body. Her stepmother was cruel, Akua just didn't understand Naruto's hesitation and reluctance. When Jayakuro was done with the torment, she spat at Naruto indignantly and left. Akua quickly knelt beside her winded brother, tears of confusion swelled in her eyes. Narunai why? Lady Jayakuro is a very influencing entity in the politics of the Vampire Council. She is not just an elder of the Vampire Council. She also holds power akin to a monarch, and her authority status in the race of the vampires is unchallenged. If you attack her just then, she will make your life miserable and make sure you live the rest of your life in constant paranoia. Just let her vents her anger on me and leave it as that. Don't pursue the matter anymore. She is someone you cannot mess with. Not with the use of violence. Naruto sighed and stood up, his injuries were healed, courtesy of his superb regeneration ability. Akua was surprised of her brother's recovery fate. Your wounds. 
instant regeneration. It is better me enduring the ordeal than you. I can heal fast. Throwing Naruto's arm over her shoulder, Akua slowly dragged him to his room. You know you don't need to do that for me, right? I said I'll protect you. That's what brother is for. Naruto smiled at her, and the elder sister of the sibling couldn't help but smile as well. Alua, Mocha and Koko were chattering in the living room until they spotted Akua aiding Naruto to his room, they gasped in terror at their brother's bloody clothes. Mocha stood up from her seat and ran towards her brother. Ani-sama. It's okay. I fell from the stairs. Naruto chuckled lightly. Alua was concerned of her brother's injuries and ambled cautiously towards him. I don't know about you but from my experience, you can't bleed that much from falling. Nai-chan, did my mother do this to you? Akua nodded. No offense, but your mother is a total bitch. The elder sister brought Naruto into his room and slammed the door shut. Koko sighed dejectedly. There is nothing we can do. But we can't let your mother bully Ani-sama like this. This must stop. What must stop? Moka widened her eyes in trepidation and slowly turned around, only to meet the furious gazes of Jayakuro. Akua was wiping off the blood from Naruto's surprisingly firm torso with a towel. I still don't understand. She is your stepmother. Why is she doing this? Because she hates everything. Simple as that. The blonde sighed. Let us just forgive and forget. No. Akua concluded. This matter won't rest until someone does something about it. Akua-chan. I don't understand, Narunai. You're not helpless. Why are you allowing that woman to push you around like this? The blonde smiled sadly. Because I'm not truly dad's son. I'm adopted. I am, after all, a fox demon. The Kyubi no Yoko is famed as the Hell's Inferno Conqueror. His power in controlling flames is unsurpassed. You are not just a mere fox demon. Akua softened her gazes at Naruto. You're the reincarnation of that almighty being. Besides, I'm sure you're not just an adopted son to father. Maybe, maybe not. I just. Their conversation was interrupted when they heard Mocha's scream of distress. Without hesitation, Naruto dashed out of his room. Daikuro pulled Mocha's silver hair aggressively, while the young vampire was screaming in anguish, trying desperately to pry off the elder vampire's firm grip. Koko and Kalyu were begging their mother to stop the ordeal, but to no avail was their persuasion successful. Jayakuro was grinning sadistically at Mocha's suffering. Stop screaming, little bitch. I did not give you any permission to scream. In a blink of an eye, Naruto was standing beside Jayakuro and grabbed her wrist. Perceiving a sudden intensification of heat burning her arm, Jayakuro flinched and retracted her hand. Why you little? The blonde spun around sporadically and knelt beside the whimpering Mocha and examined her scalp, luckily, it wasn't wounded. Jayakuro raised her hand to hit Naruto, but her action was stopped when she felt a horrifying aura lingering in the atmosphere. The blonde tilted his head sideways and glared vehemently at his stepmother. You can hit me. You can spit on me. You can scold me. I can forgive all of your abuses however I cannot forgive you if you hurt one of my sisters. Naruto stood up and snapped his attention at the elder vampire. Daikura was perturbed when she saw the blonde's eyes igniting into a pair of azure-colored flames. What are you going to do about it? Enough. Issa emerged from the darkness and frowned displeasingly at Jayakuro. What is the meaning of this? Issa? Your children are a bunch of monsters. I only tried to be nice, but... I have seen everything, Jayakuro. Issa closed his eyes to ease his migraine. If you hurt my children one more time, I will not hesitate to end your life. Do I make myself clear? Be but. They are. Do I make myself clear, Jayakuro? Jayakuro huffed and spun around before storming out of the living room. Naruto sighed before carrying Mocha to her room. In the nexus of his trip, the blonde was humming a soporific tune, and eventually, Mocha fell asleep in her brother's warm cradle. Issa exhaled a tired breath as he noticed how closed his daughters were to Naruto. Koko and Kalyu remained in the living room as they were chattering amongst themselves, while Akua took the opportunity to follow Naruto. Issa just couldn't imagine what his family would be like if Naruto wasn't around. Tucking Mocha into her bed, Naruto planted a kiss on her forehead before pulling her blanket to her shoulder. Sleep well, Mocha-chan. Ani-sama Mocha mumbled in her sleep. I love you. Naruto smiled and caressed her cheeks. I love you too. The blonde spun around and made his way to the door, only to see Akua leaning against the doorway. The elder sister of the siblings grinned. A softy, huh? Unexpectedly, Naruto swept Akua off her feet and hoisted her up in a bridal-style fashion. It's time for bed for you too. I can walk, you know. Akua traced circles on Naruto's chest teasingly with her slender finger. But you might run away. Girls at your age need more beauty sleep. Naruto grinned and strolled towards his sister's room. Opening the door with his leg adroitly, the blonde walked into Akua's bedroom and gently dropped her in her bed. Good night. 
Akua grabbed a handful of cloth from Naruto's sleeves, effectively stopping the blonde's mobility. Will you sing a lullaby for me, Narunai? Naruto smiled benignly at his sister and pondered. Hmm. A lullaby, huh? Akua nodded anxiously. I like a love song for a lullaby. Love song, huh? Someone who is able to sing a love song doesn't necessarily means that certain someone is capable of loving another person. Betting philosophical, aren't you? Akua giggled. Just sing something for me. Naruto leaned down and whispered in his sister's ear. Let me be your hero. Would you dance if I asked you to dance? Would you run and never look back? Would you cry if you saw me crying? Would you save my soul tonight? Would you tremble if I touched your lips? Would you laugh oh please tell me these. Now would you die for the one you love? Hold me in your arms tonight. I can be your hero baby. I can kiss away the pain. I will stand by you forever. You can take my breath away. Would you swear that you'll always be mine? Would you lie would you run away? Am I in too deep? Have I lost my mind? I don't care you're here tonight. I can be your hero baby. I can kiss away the pain. I will stand by you forever. You can take my breath away. I just want to hold you. I just want to hold you oh yeah. Am I in too deep? Have I lost my mind? Well I don't care you're here tonic. Naruto blinked when he heard Akua's soft snores. The blonde smiled in serenity before kissing his sister's cheeks and whispered soothingly into her ear. Good night. Next day early morning. Stashed behind Naruto's back were twin blades, with identical appearance, secured in X fashion. The blonde was facing his father in the training ground that existed in an alternative dimension created by the vampire lord. Naruto scanned his vicinity vigilantly and arched a perplexed brow at Issa. I get the whole training in a wide field but why a forest? Because it just is. Issa growled in annoyance and spotted the katana strapped on his son's back. What's with the sword? Oh. These. Naruto unsheathed one of his blades. It had a dark hilt with a crimson guard that resembled an emblem of a soaring phoenix and a well-polished silver blade. Glancing through his reflection from the blade, the blonde grinned. Mom's birthday present. Never get to use them. Figured I should appreciate her love and master it. Do you know how to wield a blade, boy? Naruto simply grinned before swinging his blade upwards, unleashing a scorching torrent of flames at his father in the process. Issa glared at the incoming assault and miraculously, the wildfire dispersed into harmless smokes. Impressive. I see you've been practicing a lot with the sword lately. You've managed to conjoin your fire with the sword and become one with your weapon. The fact that your fire is able to work in harmony with a blade and not destroy it is counted as a remarkable feat. That's not all. The blonde charged forward while letting out a ferocious war cry before leaping to the air. Issa stared insouciantly at his son who was performing acrobatic flips in the air. Naruto brought his blazing blade down at his father. To his dismay, an invisible force repelled him away from his father. Naruto regained his bearings and managed to subdue the force by shifting his momentum with adroit skills, leading to his capability of standing onto the dirt from his fall. Issa applauded. Astonishing. But not enough to take me down yet. Naruto blew off a golden fringe from his face and growled. We'll see about that. Unsheathing both blades, Naruto vanished into a static blur and reanimated his form behind Issa. Got you now. Not yet. Issa snapped his fingers and his son was blown away before crashing at a nearby tree. You're still a thousand years too early to ambush me. Allow me to educate you what true power is. Expanding his fingers and showcasing his palm, a sword materialized into Issa's grip. It had a plain design with a purple hilt, a circular guard with ancient language encrypted onto it, and a blade that was lengthened in an astounding magnitude. This is nameless. I have slaughtered thousands of demon lives with a sword. It has no name, because it requires none. Only someone who has extraordinary willpower can wield this blade without succumbing to its tainted soul. Naruto widened his eyes in shock. You mean that sword is sentient? That's right. Issa pointed a finger at the dual blades in Naruto's grasp and smirked. Those blades once belonged to Akasha. The reason why you can augment its power is simply because that blade's fundamental element is that of the flames. Like Nameless, those blades have a name as well. The blonde was taken aback by his father's speech as he studied his blade. I didn't know they have a name. Its name is erased when Akasha entrusted them to you. Issa smiled. You have to find their new name yourself. Now then shall we begin. Without hesitation, Issa recklessly attempted a slash at Naruto. The blonde evaded the attack with ease, but he was horrified at the dramatic aftermath, the forest was cleaved into half, leading devastating earthquakes to occur. Oh, I overdid it a bit there. The vampire elder shrugged nonchalantly and grinned. The fun has only just started. Naruto gulped fearfully as he braised himself for an imminent clash against a superior foe. Allow me to show you what hell on earth means. Er, can I don't allow you to do that. Naruto chuckled nervously. 
Misa tapped his chin in consideration before shattering his son's hope. No. Breakfast was made by Akua that morning. The family was surprised that the eldest sister of the siblings was a great cook whose domestic skills were on par with Naruto. When their brother entered the kitchen, the sisters were petrified by the bruises and wounds inflicted on his body. Mocha and Koko ran towards their brother and cried. Ani-sama. What happened? You look like you got hit by a truck and survive. Yeah? Naruto chuckled. Well, I've been through ten times worse than that. I think I can handle it. Palua scrutinized the cuts on her brother's body and fur at her brows. Did you just get cut by a sword? Specifically, dad's sword. The blonde blew off a golden bang from his features and sighed. You should see that mountain he sliced up into half during training. It scares the living daylight out of me when he does that. Akio arched a curious brow. His father that powerful? Oh, you better believe it. Naruto shuddered as a terrifying flashback struck him. Let just say the five of us are sitting ducks to him. Well, we're sitting ducks to him one way or another. Wow, father must have been taking your training way too seriously. Koko snickered. Well, if I want to protect the four of you, that's the only way. Naruto smiled before limping back to his bedroom, his sisters simply giggled at their brother's affection. Call me when dinner's ready. I did not give this dog the permission to live in my husband's mansion. Jayakuro shrieked angrily at the butler. Kill it. But madam. Mokasama and. Do I care what that abomination thinks? Dispose of the filthy dog or else. Issa was taking a quiet stroll in his garden when he spotted a commotion at the front gate of his manor. The vampire lord sighed and ambled tiredly towards his wife. Jayakuro, what's the matter? Issa? You must talk some sense to the butler. This dog is unworthy to be. Max is part of the family. Issa was stoic. Besides, the girls love him. But. You're only here for a week, Jayakuro. The vampire lord interrupted his wife. Stop stirring trouble anymore. Jayakuro folded her arms and huffed with arrogance. Then why am I not informed that there is a dog living in our mansion? Firstly, you never call a right to me. Issa sighed. Secondly, you rarely live with me. I don't see the point in telling you about Max's existence. Thirdly, this is my mansion. Whether the dog lives here or not, it doesn't hold any importance to you whatsoever. What are you talking about? Jayakuro clutched her chest dramatically at Issa's words. You sound like I don't even stand any value in your heart. The vampire elder was about to retort, but he was interrupted by the presences of other vampires. Issa arched a tranquil brow at the intruders, noticed the dark uniforms the vampires were wearing, and rolled his eyes with annoyance. What does the vampire council wants with me? Issa Shuzen, former dark lord and emperor of all vampires, you are hereby arrested for providing sanctuary to the demon king, Kayubi no Yoko. Naruto Shuzen, reincarnation of the Demon King, is hereby arrested for being an unofficial resident of the Shuzen household. The vampires spoke monotonously before bowing politely at their lord. The creed is absolute. Please come with us quietly and hand over the seat of the Demon King. Nobody noticed the wicked grin of victory tugging at Jayakuro's lips. I beg your pardon. Issa frowned as he crossed his arms. The council is arresting Millard, former Dark Lord and current Emperor MMGH. The vampires were gradually levitated into the air while they were grasping their necks, choking roughly by a sudden force which was unwrapping their necks. Issa was merely staring at them in perfect stoic and tilted his head sideways. Insolent fools. The council dares issue such audacious warrant against me. Listen to me and listen clear, insects, I am capable of creating the council, and I am more than capable of squashing a bunch of idiots if I wish. Issa swiped his hands and spontaneously, the subordinates of the council dropped to the ground and stared apprehensively at the intimidating presence of their emperor. Get out of my sight. The vampires yelped aloud and dashed away. Jayakura was sweating profusely. No matter how many times she had witnessed the display of Issa's indefinite amount of power, she would always feel a chill of anxiety crawling up her spine, and her stomach lurched when her husband turned his attention at her. Now that we're done here, I will take my leave. This is my last warning to you. Do not stir any more trouble for me. My patience is not limitless. But the snap of his fingers, Issa dissipated into a blur of electricity and vanished from his spot, leaving a frightened Jayakuro gasping for air. Naruto was resting in his chamber, enjoying the gentle breeze coming from his open window, and smiled at the white clouds decorated on the emperor and blue sky. The blonde sighed and stared at this twin katana that were leaning against the edge of the wall. Naruto sighed before his ears twitched fervently and he sat up immediately. As if on cue, the door creak opened, and Koko entered into the room with a tray of food in her hands. Ani-chan, I bring food with me. We'll eat dinner together. The blonde smiled benignly at his considerate little sister. Are you sure, koko chan You know mother dislikes you eating in bedrooms. You know you're a messy eater. I don't care. I want to eat with Ani-chan. koko pouted. 
Tuckling lightly, Naruto stood up from his bed and ambled towards his little sister, before helping Kokoa to distribute the plates of food onto his bed. Alright, but don't let anybody knows about this. Your sisters will make a fuss if they find out about you and your naughty deeds. Kokoa giggled and nodded ecstatically. Okay. Let's eat. At that moment, Issa slammed open the door and disrupted their meals. Kokoa yelped in fright before she quickly hid behind her brother's back. Oh no. Daddy caught us. We're doomed. Issa scowled. Naruto. We're leaving. The blonde beat to perplexed brow. Leaving. To where? The Imperial Coven. Issa Shuzen and Naruto Shuzen stood under the spotlight and were confronting the council. The blonde was sweating immensely before the unnerving silence the councilmen were prolonging. Naruto had never met the chamber of the council before, and it was simply unpleasant standing in his shoe. He was aware of the conspiracy the corrupted councilmen had been scheming for decades, and their ruthless disposition was not much of a secret. The vampire lord however was unusually tranquil at their dire situation. He was fondling the ring on his finger, while an ominous shadow was concealing his features. The councilman finally broke the lugubrious quietness and coughed. Issa Shuzen. Issa Shuzen. The entire chamber shook violently as Issa's rage escalated. I've only been absent in this chamber for a few decades, and the lots of you have grown the nerve to flaunt your insolence at me. We're sorry for the rudeness, my king, but we must address this urgent issue now. Issa turned his attention to the speaker and narrowed his eyes in a threatening manner. And did I even give you the authorization to speak? You lots of incorrigible buffoons and your stunning ego are truly disturbing. The emperor snapped his fingers and his gothic throne materialized behind him. Seating casually on his throne, Issa crossed his legs and rested his elbow on the armrest. Now speak. I don't have time to waste. The councilman's vigor was enervated. Our deepest apologies, sir, but we cannot allow the presence of that that. Issa stroked his chin with his finger and muttered. Stop babbling. We have come to realize the Kyubi no Yoko, the once proclaimed king of hell, has recently passed away. Although his demise was considered as highly classified information, we couldn't gather any information of a possible offspring that the almighty demon might have left behind. However, this particular set of beliefs is a mere divergence to the full picture. The truth is his reincarnation survives and he is now residing with you in Castle Akashia, my king. The councilman pointed an accusing finger at Naruto. We must destroy the seed of evil before it. Referred my son with the proper epithet. Issa growled as his eyes illuminated a sinister crimson. Yes my king. The councilmen gulped fearfully and were reluctant to address Naruto with respect. The point is Prince Naruto's existence will undeniably be a threat to, not just the universe of the vampires, but to the nation of all demons. We cannot let Kyubi no Yoko restores his full power and. Whether he lives or not is not up to you to decide. Issa tapped his temples and scowled. But I do appreciate your concern for the welfare of our race. If there isn't anything else, I'll take my leave gentlemen. My king. You must reconsider your impetuous decision. We must approach the situation without being obstructed by any subjectivity. We understand your love for the prince, but his destiny will affect our world. We're saying a dramatic change for the future of our race. The councilman spoke irascibly. We must solve this predicament before it exacerbate to the point of no return. My king, I will suggest we get rid of the root of all evil before. So you want me to kill my son? Issa narrowed his eyes vehemently. Is this what you want me to do? Please face the facts, my king. No matter how zealous and loyal he is, he will never be able to succeed you as the next emperor. He doesn't even meet the basic criterion of being a vampire. His veins flow the blood of a malignant demon that once conquers the unconquerable hell. It is simply preposterous to let him join our ranks and fight with us. My king, this is not the time for ambivalence. You shall not be pertinacious to this crisis. No. I will not kill him. But, my king. Silence. Issa bellowed and the entire chamber fell into a dead quiet. Who's the emperor in this chamber? Who's the one who made all of you what you are today? Who's the one who unite the entire vampires as one, civilized force? Me. I am the king here. My decision is final. The next one who defies me, I will rip your organs out, crush your skull, take your contemptible soul and throw it into the pits of hell. The councilmen were shrinking in consternation at the rage of their emperor, they knew the livid vampire lord was more than capable of eradicating them, and they knew better than to force the king to exemplify his words. Issa regained his composure and stood up gracefully from his seat. Now, is there anybody who would like to object to my decision? Nobody dared to respond. Anyone? The silence was unsettling. If that's the case, I'll take my leave. Good day. Daikuro grinned maliciously at the shivering cornered Mocha who had nowhere to go. What are you going to do with me? What am I going to do with you? I didn't even give you the permission to speak, and you dare question me with your absurdity. 
The vampire elder snickered as she couldn't relinquish her urge to control her temptation. I'm going to. Hands off my daughter, Jayakuro. Akasha stormed into the commotion and stood protectively in front of her daughter. Rolling her eyes with annoyance, Jayakuro placed a hand on her hips and pointed a finger at the quavering mocha. Ask that cheeky little monster of yours. She dares pour lemonade in my brand new Gucci bag. She deserves to be punished. Akasha gasped before she laid a furious pair of glares upon Mocha. Tell me that's not true, Mocha. Tell me. Mocha swallowed hard and whispered. I I did but. Akasha didn't want to listen to reason anymore, in a fit of rage, she slapped her daughter. The girl was petrified in horror that her mother had hit her. Her mother had never hit her before. Tears swelled in her eyes before she clenched her trembling fists and screamed aloud. I hate you. Ani-sama is hundred times better than you. Ani-sama never scolds me. Daikuro chortled mentally in victory, she witnessed streaming liquid cascading along the curvature of Akasha's cheeks when Mocha ran away from them. Naruto was following behind his father quietly and his head hung low. Issa noticed the abnormal silence his surrogate son was feigning and sighed. Don't be pestered by what the council has said just now. Father the blonde stopped in his tracks. The vampire lord twirled his sights at Naruto and raised a curious brow. What is it? The council isn't wrong. In fact I, I agree with what they say. I'm an abomination, dad. I don't want to live if other people have to die. Foolish boy. Issa softened his gazes. Even if you die, other people will still die. One way or another, nothing will change. However, if you submit to the will of the council just because you believe you can't conquer the overwhelming might of Kayubi no Yoko, then I'm utterly disappointed with you. I did not raise you to be defeated so easily by the likes of the council or that fox. The Naruto shoes in that I know is indomitable, uncanny, determined and a nanny to my daughters. Naruto's lips slowly curved into a smile of gratitude. Thanks for believing me, dad. Right. Now let's get going. Issa crossed his arms and returned his bearings to his pathway, only to see a familiar entity standing before him. Furrowing his brows in displeasure, Issa tilted his head sideways and queried. It has been a long time, Belial. Long time no see, Issa-san. Belial smirked as he swayed his curly, shoulder-length hair behind his shoulder. The demon lord wore magenta-colored tuxedo, and his posture was filled with utmost grace. Belial's eyes shifted to the blonde boy who stood beside Issa, and his curiosity was piqued. Oh. This must be Prince Naruto. I have attended the council meeting, Issa-san, and I must say that your speech has always been so electrifying. That to the point, Belial. I have no time for your silly chichid. Belial averted his eyes away and sighed. I would like you to repay your debt to me today. You mean that debt I owe you 500 years ago? I didn't take you as a calculative person. Regardless, I am facing a crisis. I really need your help. My help. Issa was perplexed. You never ask anybody for help before. Why the sudden change? Desperate time. Belial sighed. Besides, it's because I've never asked anybody for help, which is why I need to ask a favor from you. I'm listening. Belial stepped aside and gestured two entities, concealing under the shadow, to march forward. Issa and Naruto were surprised when two girls emerged from the darkness and bowed meekly at them. Belial smiled at the girls and turned his attention to the vampire lord. These two are my baby girls. This is Morganine's land, and this is Lilithine's land. The girl with short neon green hair spoke with a courteous tone and beamed ecstatically at the eulogizing presence that was the emperor. I am Morganine's land. It is an honor to meet you, Millard. It is an honor to meet you too, Prince Naruto. Naruto scratched his head and chuckled sheepishly. I'm still not used to people addressing me as prince. Another girl with vibrant violet hair, who shared similar haircut with her elder sister, flashed a toothy smile at her seniors. My name is Lilithine's land. It is a pleasure meeting you, King Issa. Prince Naruto. Issa deadpanned. Great. Congratulations for having two daughters. I'm sorry that I didn't attend to your daughter's birthday bash. Now can I leave? Yes. Belial sighed heavily. But you leave with my Morrigan and Lilith. The two girls blinked dumbly. Upon registering their father's words, Morgan and Lilith turned their sights sharply at their father and cried. Daddy. Are you abandoning us? Issa beaked a confused brow. Why are you giving your daughters to me? The demon lord knelt beside his sobbing daughters and stroked their hairs affectionately. Morgan, Lilith, the two of you must become strong, okay? Daddy cannot stay with the two of you anymore. You need to be independent from now on. But why? Morgan wept. I don't want daddy to leave us. Lilith screeched. Issa frowned. Don't tell me. Belial stared at the vampire lord with pleading eyes. Take care of them for me, Issa. I entrust their safety to you. In a blink of an eye, the demon lord disappeared into nothingness, leaving the young Morrigan and Lilith to cry hysterically at their spot. 
Naruto smiled benevolently at the girls as he ambled forward and patted their heads. It's okay. Everything will be alright. I'm sure. Shut up. Don't touch me. Morgan pushed Naruto away and hugged her younger sister in a firm embrace. The blonde shifted his sights at his father. What should we do, dad? Issa shrugged apathetically. In all honesty, I'm not good with kids. If they don't like you, they sure won't like me. Naruto and Issa turned their attentions at the still crying Morrigan and Lilith, and they sighed in unison. The vampire lord looked sheepishly at his surrogate son and smirked. I'll bring the three of you back to the mansion. I have something to discuss with Belial. Flicking his fingers, Naruto and the sobbing sisters were teleported back to Castle Akashia, much to the blonde's dismay. Meanwhile, the maids in Castle Akashia were suffering a dilemma, Jayakuro lost her priceless set of earrings and was accusing anybody who she deemed suspicious. Her primary target was set on her stepdaughter, Akira Shuzen. I didn't steal her earrings. How do you want me to return something I have not taken? Akua growled in untamed rage. Alua ushered her elder sister in frustration. Stop lying, Akua. Mom can't be accusing you for no reason. That's exactly what she's doing. Accusing me for no reason. Akua wanted to argue for her dignity, but her tolerance and patience were limiting. Dayakuro slam opened the door and stormed towards her proclaimed culprit of her missing jewelries, before pointing an accusing finger at Akua. Filthy wench. I didn't give you the permission to take my valuable. Return me my earrings, you low-class imbecile. I'm not low-class. Dayakuro scoffed indignantly as she crossed her arms, displaying her pompous attitude blatantly. Really? I know all about you and your wretched mother. The both of you are just one of a kind. She's a slut who has no qualm making erroneous decision to steal people's husband. And you? You're a hopeless thief. Your mother has forsaken you, which is why you've chosen to come here. To steal your father's wealth. You're a shameless bastard. Shut up. Shut up. Tears swelled in Akua's eyes as she clutched her ears shut. I don't want to hear it from you. Alua remained awfully quiet, unsure what she should do. She was afraid to interfere and be indulged in her mother's tantrum. Sporadically, Koko was skipping into the main hall and accidentally stumbled into the disputation. Jayakuro gaped when she saw her youngest daughter fiddling with her earrings and yelled aloud, alarming Koko in the process. Koko. Come over here, you rascal. Koko blinked and took a tentative step forward. What is it, mommy? Snatching her precious jewelry away from Koko's grasp, Jayakuro growled. How many times did I tell you? Do not play with my things. Be but mommy. Akua was seething with rage, her cacids for bloodshed was about to erupt as she bellowed furiously. Look. Coco is the one who took your stupid earrings. Not me. The eldest sister of the sisters grunted in anger, she was accused for thievery and was condemned due to her mother's status. She detested her narcissistic egotistic stepmother and only wished that her brother could return to her immediately. In all honesty, Akua was belittled since the death of her mother. They called her names, disparaged her lineage and denounced her pride, but she tolerated it all, she had suffered sorrowful, lonely nights, crying all by herself to sleep. Clenching her fist tightly, Akua ran away, her tears had supposedly dried up years ago. Alua simply stood there and sighed heavily. Nai-chan, please return to us. This family needs you. Naruto, Morgan and Lilith were zapped to the entrance of Castle Akashia. The girls were frightened by the foreign surrounding, and Naruto merely grunted incoherently. Dad is such a prick. He never even tells me anything and he forcefully brings me back here. When he switched his attention to the sobbing girls, the blonde softened his gazes and sighed lightly. Approaching the girls cautiously, Naruto reached out her hand to Lilith, but her elder sister slapped the hand of Mansuetude away. Don't touch my sister, you pervert. Me? Pervert. Naruto stared at the green-haired girl incredulously before he dropped his head in defeat, in their current states, it was understandable that Morrigan would inevitably become extremely protectively over her younger sister. Whatever. Since dad has already made his decision, there is nothing much I can do. I'm gonna escort the both of you to your rooms and. I sleep with one each and. I can't sleep without one each and. Lilith protested. Oh okay. Naruto beamed cheerfully, trying his earnest to invigorate the doleful atmosphere. Come on. Follow me. I'll bring you to your arm. The blonde led the way and purposely evaded the possibly route to Jayakuro's chamber during their journey, the last thing he needed was a wrathful, unreasonable vampire screaming her umbrage at him. He didn't want a migraine. When they reached the end of seemingly endless steps of a hallway, Naruto stopped in his tracks and twisted his sights at the girls. They froze uneasily when they met the pair of serene, blue eyes staring with enthusiasm at them. This room is located at the far end of this corridor. The maids rarely come here unless they're dusting this place. And in other words, nobody will disturb you. Or just get comfy with this place. Treat it as your home. Uh, if you need anything else just tell me. Naruto handed a pair of keys to the girls and bowed politely. 
Please don't leave the room. I need to settle something with my family. Uh just go in. I'll bring dinner to you. The girls opened the door to their room hastily before rushing into it. Naruto sighed and ambled away. I know the layout of this place far too well. This is a guest room and this place is quite far away from mother's rooms. That means the chances of Lady Jayakuro coming here is slim to none. That will guarantee the girl's safeties for now. The moment Naruto stepped into the living room, he detested the unpleasantness of the room. Kaluya was seating on the rug, staring lifelessly at a photo album, flipping pages occasionally. There was no trace of Mocha, Coco or Akua. It was too quiet. Naruto quietly sat behind Kaluya and patted his sister's shoulder abruptly. Unexpectedly, his usual jumpy sister was surprisingly calm. Kaluya merely looked at her brother in poignant sadness before she flipped through a few pages of her photo album. Naruto raised a brow. What's wrong, Kaluya chan You look down today. So who's messing with my precious Kaluya chan It's not that. Kaluya pouted. Nobody is bullying me. Well, not when my elder brother happens to be the living reincarnation of the demonic fox of hell, no. Naruto chuckled and scratched his head in modesty. So what is making my Kaluya chan upset? Kaluya sighed once again. Nai chan will you promise me one thing? What is it? The blonde raised a brow. What's with the tension? The anguish is getting palpable. Please don't leave me tears liquefied in Kaluya's pair of emerald colored eyes before she spun around abruptly and hugged her brother. This family needs you. I need you. Blinking quizzically at the awkward scene before him, Naruto patted his sister's back, trying to soothe Kaluya's sorrow. Okay calm down, Kaluya chan just tell me what's going on. This morning Kaluya hiccuped and wiped her tears from her reddened cheeks. My mother makes Mocha-chan cry. What? Naruto yelled. But why? I don't know and then earlier afternoon, I saw one chan arguing with my mother. And then Akasha saw Malox herself in her bedroom this family is crumbling before my eyes and there is nothing I can do to too. Alright, alright, don't talk anymore. Naruto kissed his sister's forehead gently. I'll go check on Mocha-chan and Akua-chan. Here, I'll bring you to your bedroom. Hoisting Kalyu in a bridal fashion, the blonde strolled to his sister's bedroom with a still sobbing blonde vampire in his hands. In times of his precious sister's distress, Naruto didn't notice a certain green-haired succubus spying on him behind a wall. Mocha was forcing herself to sleep, reminiscence of the depressive morning made her stomach lurched. Tossing and turning in her bed, she was still unable to fall into a possible blissful oblivion. Mocha just couldn't find the whole notion of her kind, loving mother, hitting her harshly plausible, the perturbing anger in Akasha eyes, had frightened the silver-haired vampire deeply. It was then her thoughts of utter disarray were disrupted by a sudden knock from her door. Leave me alone. It's me. Naruto's voice reached to the moody vampire. Just leave me alone. Her soft tone was filled with uncertainty. The blonde sighed and opened the door slowly. You know I'm worried about you. Kaluya-chan told me that you skipped lunch and dinner. It's not healthy, you know. Mocha clutched her bed sheet tightly. Naruto smirked deviously and snaked his route to his sister's bed quietly. Seating gently on Mocha's bedside, Naruto whispered soothingly. Mocha-chan, if you're suffering malnutrition, it will pain me. Besides I know what happened between you and mother. Abruptly, Mocha sat up and stared at Naruto with wet eyes. I didn't do it on purpose, I swear. I it was an accident. I was just walking to the kitchen cause I was thirsty, and then I saw lemonade, and I like lemonade, so I want to drink it, and I didn't notice. Whoa, whoa. Calm down. Naruto smiled angelically and somewhat, his look of tranquility calmed Mocha. Just explain it slowly. The young vampire inhaled a deep breath and elaborated. This morning, I went to the kitchen to get something to drink because I'm thirsty. I saw a cup of lemonade on the table, and nobody is drinking it. Since nobody has drunk that lemonade I wanted to drink it. But then there's a spider on the ground and I was afraid, so I flinch. You flinch. Naruto raised his brow. Let me guess, you flinch and accidentally knock onto the cup of lemonade, and coincidentally, Lady Jayakuro's bag is right beside where the cup is. Too much coincidence is happening in this story. Naturally, this house is dustless and clean, so the chances of a spider crawling in our kitchen are quite impossible. And then that cup of lemonade. Who will just place a full cup of lemonade on the kitchen table without drinking it? And why the hell is Lady Jayakuro's bag lying right beside that table? Mocha blinked. Are you saying that that woman is scheming to frame me? Why will she do that for? Is she bored or something? Naruto sighed. I'm just deducing. Now go to sleep. But I can't sleep. Stroking his chin in contemplation, Naruto's lips broke into a witty smirk. What do you think about supper? Akua had developed a habit of writing letters to her deceased mother whenever she felt distressed, especially the cause of her dismay resulted from an obnoxious, petulant woman who had a contemptible tendency to accuse people for spite. 
Placing her pen down, Akua stared through her window at the oak tree just right outside her bedroom, and there was a nest of sparrows resting on the branch. The vampire sighed softly at the avian and rested her cheeks on her cold palm. I'm starting to hate this place. Aware that her door was creaking open, Akua turned her sights at the intruder. Kalua. What do you want now? You don't need to be mean. I'm just bringing supper. Akua beeped a brow. Supper. Don't give me that look. It's Nai-chan's idea Kalua placed the tray of food on a nearby table and crossed her hands. We might be sisters, but I know you do look at him with a different perspective that a sister shouldn't. Like you did. Akua smirked when her blonde sister's cheeks flushed hot red, she loved aggravating her younger sister. I, I don't know what you're talking about. Denial, denial, my dearest sister, but I can see right through you. Akua's devilish grin widened into a horrifying magnitude as her judgment had hit jackpot. At that moment, Naruto and Mocha strolled into the rooms with trays of food in their hands. What are the two of you talking about? Who's seeing right through whom? Mocha queried innocently. Nothing. Kalyu laughed nervously. Nichan is just saying that she can see right through me because. Naruto, Mocha and Akua stared at her in complete perplexity. Because. Because I love to drink blood like she does. Right. Naruto distributed the dishes. I'm sure you do. Come on, the food's not going to eat itself. And where's Kokoa-chan? Kokoa walked into the room meekly as she was mortified to confront her elder sister. After the tribulation that transpired earlier, Kokoa felt ashamed. Naruto sighed as he saw the emotional turmoil swirling in his youngest sister's mind. Ambling casually to Kokoa, who was standing aghast at the doorway, Naruto patted her shoulders in assurance. Akua-chan, Kokoa-chan, I know there's some misunderstanding between. Misunderstanding? Akua narrowed her eyes. I was accused and humiliated. Trust me, I understand how it feels. Naruto took a deep breath. But the two of you are sisters. And you're the eldest, Akua-chan. She is still young. It's only natural that you're forgiving. Besides, this is all an accident. Kokoa nodded with an adorable pout plastered on her features. The eldest of the sisters deadpanned. When I'm at her age, I've already started killing polar bears with my bare hands. Naruto and his sisters were startled, and the blonde pondered momentarily before he questioned further. How did you find polar bears to kill? Akua shrugged nonchalantly. I was bored so I went to the North Pole for some sightseeing. The polar bears thought I was tasty so I proved them otherwise. I really want to befriend them though. I see the blonde side. But that doesn't mean you can't forgive Kokoa-chan. She's innocent. You know Lady Jayakuro is feisty. Itchy. Akua corrected. Naruto knelt beside Akua and held her hands, much to Kalua's vexation. It is only serendipity that allows us to be siblings. We have to cherish this moment. As an eldest sister, you have to be forgiving. Koko rushed to Akua's side and grasped her arm. Wani-sama please don't be mad at me. Akua's heart melted when she witnessed her youngest sister's cute blinking and sighed. I'm not mad at you. I'm just mad at your mother. She's a total bitch. Naruto coughed aloud. Akua rolled her eyes disapprovingly. I'm not taking that back. She's really nice if you get to know her. Kalua said and everybody stared at her in bafflement. Really? Mocha blurted out in exasperation. No. The blonde vampire sighed softly. Just trying to make conversation. She's my mother after all. Alright, alright, let's put it as that. Naruto smirked and handed the cutleries to his sisters. Before we eat, I have to make some formal introduction for our new guests. The four sisters blinked quizzically at their brother. The blonde folded his arms and raised his volume. The two of you can come in now. I know you're outside. Shifting gazes at the door, the four sisters waited patiently as two girls stepped into Akua's bedroom timidly. Naruto saw their hesitations and smiled. Relax, they're not going to hurt you. Nai-chan Kalua's scrutiny was fixated at the green-haired girl. If her judgment hadn't failed her, Akua and the mysterious guest could be potential rivals in the future. Who are they? Dad's friend, for unexplained reasons, wants his daughters to live with us. Whether they're crashing here temporarily or permanently, it's not up to me to decide. For now, we're family living under one roof. So let us all be friends, okay? Kokoa flashed an excited grin at Naruto when she saw Lilith. Ani-chan. Am I not the youngest now in the family? Look at her. I bet she's younger than me. The brother of the siblings grinned and ruffled Kokoa's vibrant auburn hair. Oh. What's so bad about being the youngest? You know Ani-chan loves his Kokoa-chan the most, right? Kokoa nodded fervently and hugged her brother. Yup. I'm Morrigan Eansland the succubus who wore a plain black dress whispered almost inaudibly. I'm Lilith Eansland. The purple-haired succubus, adorned herself with a delicate pink dress, switched her attention sharply at Kokoa, and she winked playfully at her. And I'm two months, six days and fourteen hours older than you. How did she know about my age? 
Kokoa dropped her head in defeat. I'm still stuck being the youngest. Drat. I'm Mocha Shuzen. Nice to meet you. Mocha bowed politely. I'm Kalyu Shuzen feel free to talk to me if you ever need help. The blonde vampire smiled uneasily at her guests and picked up her fork. Where are all these girls popping out from? Akyu Shuzen. The eldest sister of the siblings glared at Morgan and smirked shrewdly. You're strong. I can sense tremendous power emanating from your body. How intoxicating. Morrigan's seemingly pusillanimous facade shattered almost instantly, and a nefarious grin crept up at her pink lips as she returned a subtle, yet undeniably menacing gazes at Akua. Intriguing. You see right through me. You must be the black devil, Akua Shuzen. Akua didn't reply verbally, she merely smiled. Wait a sec. Naruto swallowed hard. You mean this morning. If I don't shed some tears, would your father accept me and my sister into your mansion? Morgan studied her nails insouciantly as she sat on the couch while Lilith settled herself beside her elder sister. What can I say? Acting is my forte and being ostensible is what I do. I must say though, for being the reincarnation of Kayubi no Yoko, you're awfully naive. Lilith giggled as Naruto blushed in embarrassment. Still Morgan stood up and stared at the blonde with promiscuous glow shining in her jade-colored eyes. Caressing Naruto's reddening cheeks with her slender fingers, the succubus winked seductively at the boy. You're cute. And you know what? I like cute things. Nobody noticed Kalyu had just snapped the fork in her hand. Ah, uh, the food is getting cold. Naruto managed to slip away from Morgan's clutches and prepared the food hastily. Let's eat. Oblivious to the situation, Mocha and Coco chirped in delight. Supper party. Next morning. When Naruto was awoke, he was pressurized by a disturbing predicament. He had forgotten to usher his sisters to bed, and they were all asleep in Akua's bedroom, cramping in her bed. Lying in the middle of the pile of sleeping maidens was the blonde, with Coco and Lilith hugging their bolster, which happened to be Naruto's right arm, while Mocha was grasping his left arm as a mean for comfort. However, what was truly unsettling was the fact that Akua, Morgan and Kalyu were sleeping atop of his body, rendering him unable to move even the slightest. Flexing his neck upright, Naruto couldn't help but smiled at the girl's peaceful sleeping forms. Kalyu was drooling on his shirt while Akua was biting Naruto's collar in her sleep, and Morgan was snoring softly. Unnervingly, the three girls' lips were at close proximity to his, and he could feel the heat from their breath. Note to self. No more supper party. Exhaling an exhausted breath, Naruto scanned the room and wrinkled his nose and brows. Dirty plates and bowls were tipped over and scattered randomly all over the chamber, leaving a repugnant odor lingering in the air. The blonde tried to raise his body, but the girls had his frame secured firmly onto the bed. Naruto sighed and whispered silently to Akua. PSST Akua-chan. Wakey wakey. Aya, shut up and sleep Akua fell back to sleep. Naruto turned his attention to Kalua and licked his lips. Kalua-chan. Kalua-chan. I love you Nai-chan. The blonde smiled. I love you too, Kalua-chan. But right now, I really need to get out of this conundrum. Reluctantly, Naruto shifted his sights at Morrigan. Damn I don't know her well. Suddenly, the green-haired succubus opened her eyes with an enchanting smile plastered on her face. Good morning, cutie pie. Naruto almost choked. Morgan giggled softly and tapped her finger on his lips playfully. Not so loud. You'll wake your sisters up. We don't want that, do we? Uh yeah. Would you mind removing yourself from me? Pondering momentarily, Morgan snickered in vivacity. Why should I? Because this is getting uncomfortable. Great. Morgan closed his eyes and nuzzled her cheek on Naruto's torso. Now go back to sleep. Don't you feel sad that your father? I know what my daddy is planning to do. Rest assured, he will be safe. Morgan smirked. Now go back to sleep or there will be consequences. Naruto sighed and closed his eyes. Breakfast was joyous. Mocha's favorite sandwich consisted of half-melted cheese at the bottom section of the bread, half-cooked beef resting on the middle layer with fresh lettuce lying atop of the meat. Mocha loved such order and was significantly fussy with it. She knew, amongst her family members, only Naruto took note of her particular. Taking a small bite on the edge of her sandwich, Mocha smiled happily. Coco simply dug her spoon into her bowl of chocolate-favored cornflakes, unbeknownst to others, Cocoa favored goat milk than ordinary milk. She better mother knew nothing about that. Due to typical and sometimes disastrous clumsiness, Naruto had banned Kalua for indulging into culinary arts. However, she enjoyed pancakes for breakfast and preferred each crepe to be lightly cooked with vague spots of brownness on it. She desired strawberry syrup and it must only cascade at four directions, followed by two cubes of butter resting neatly on top of the highest crepe. Since Naruto had been preparing his sister's meals for years, it was only natural that he knew everything about them. Still, Akua, Morgan and Lilith were relatively new to the household. 
So the blonde had no choice but to execute his talents and cooked a banquet for the girls. Saying that they were enthusiastic was a mere understatement. I wish we have guests in our house every day. Coco had dipped her skewer of chicken into the saucer of barbec sauce and bit it with glee. Why? Kalua was curious. So we can have a feast for breakfast every day. The vermilion-haired vampire cried. Mocha nodded fervently. MMM. Naruto pouted in mock terror. And I'll be tired as hell, you two devils. Mocha and Coco giggled. So, what do the three of you like? Akua smiled courteously. Aya, I'm not picky. I'm a survivor. I've already used to eating anything. But I do have a sweet tooth. Naruto grinned in understanding. Got it. What about you, Mori-chan? Mori-chan? Where does this moniker come from? Heh. A player, perhaps. Morgan smirked in exuberance at the query. Unlike Akua-san, I am a picky person. You sure you can handle me? Palua broke the stainless steel fork within her grasp once again. Ignorant of his situation, Naruto laughed nervously. I hope so. Then I won't hold back. Morgan smirked and articulated her words fluently and rapidly. I detest oily food, junk food and processed food. I like seafood. In fact, I love lobsters. I don't like my lobster fried. I prefer it to be steamed within a pot without using seawater. I want it to spray with salt, garlic, not sliced but diced, celery, herbs and peppercorn. I love stir-fried squid cooked by six cloves of garlic, olive oil and not peanut oil, celeries and pepper. I also love scallops marinated with white wine, remember not to overcook the scallops or else its texture will become very awful. I also love lasagne baked with salmon marinated by red wine. So, do you understand? Everybody was startled and nobody could register the succubus's words, except a grinning Naruto. He stood up, placed his hands behind his back before reciting everything. Let's see, you love lobster, squid, scallops, salmons and technically, everything about seafood. You despise oily, junk and processed food. You love your lobsters steam in a pot, not fried. The lobster must not soak with seawater. The ingredients for the dish are salt, diced garlic, celery, herbs and peppercorn. Squid should be stirred fried and cooked with six cloves of garlic, olive oil, celery and pepper. Scallops should be marinated with white wine. You didn't state how you would like it to be cooked, but I guess the suggestion is steam. The same should be baked with marinated salmon, and the sauce is red wine. Am I not right? Morgan paused for a while in shock before she clapped softly, clearly impressed. Wow. Even my personal chef can't remember all of them. I must say, you'll make a good husband someday. Palua had broken her spoon. Naruto scratched his head sheepishly. I have good memories. That doesn't mean anything. So, what is your desire, Lilith-chan? I hope it's not another cornucopia of wonder delights. The blonde snuck an impassive gaze at Morgan, she noticed it and blew a flying kiss. I just love tuna, that's all. Lilith tapped her chin in contemplation before a productive light bulb lightened up in her mind, and she beamed. And cheeseburger with extra cheese. Cranberry juice, soda and fruit punch. I also like pizza. They're yummy, especially the meat lovers. And fish burger with extra tartar sauce. I like potato wedges and chips as well. Me like bubble tea too. Great, one loves junk food, and the other happens to be a fastidious eater. My life just gets better and better. Naruto struggled to feign a smile. No problem. Easy as pie. Oh. I love pie too. Lilith chirped. Great. Naruto rolled his eyes. Sporadically, Jayakuro, dressed in her blue kimono, ambled gracefully into the kitchen and laid her pair of crimson eyes at two unknown entities. Oh. Who might you be? I hope you're not another abomination, like them. The orange-haired vampire elder sneered as she shot nasty glares at a solemn Naruto, a vexing mocha and an annoyed Akua. Good morning, mother. Kokoa muttered, her eyes were downcast. Good morning, mother. Kalua smiled warily. Good morning, Satan. Akua smirked impishly. Daikuro kept an impassive feature and sat beside Morgan. So, who are you? The daughter of the demon lord who once humiliated you in Belial's 700th annual grand ceremony. Morgan flipped her hair back away from her shoulder. The name's Morgan Eensland, Crown Princess of the Fourth Hell. And I'm Lilith Eensland. Daikuro stood up, clearly disgusted by her discovery. So it's you, you illegitimate child of that pathetic demon. Moron. Morgan smirked triumphantly and waved a finger provokingly at the elder vampire. My sister and I are adopted. And if my father is pathetic, then you're ten time worse than him. After all, he isn't king for nothing. Naruto gulped. This ain't going well. You. Me what? Morgan's devilish smirk widened by folds. Getting all angry cos of lil of me. Your pride sure sinks a new low, Jayo-chan. Daikuro growled vehemently at the succubus before she twirled around pompously and ambled away. 
When silence had intruded the dining hall, Morgan shifted her attention back at the group, only to see Mocha staring at her with stars of admiration sparkling in her eyes, Naruto shaking his head disapprovingly and Akua giggling with joy. Coco and Kalyumir sighed. Hooray. Wani chan you're awesome. Lilith cheered. Morgan winked. Daikura was venting in rage at her bedroom as she threw her cosmetics away from the table. Unforgivable. That wretched girl. It was then a malevolent idea struck her. Oh yes. There is a leaving party that will be held this Saturday. Great. I will specially invite Belial's councilman. If my memory serves me well, they hate those girls' guts. Grinning in delight, the vampire elder picked up her phone. So this part ends here. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, so quickly like this video for second part of this series. And comment down below your thoughts about this series. And now it's time for me to go, bye.